The scriptures have been wonderful over the past three weeks. It's been this moment where Jesus Christ is um, welcoming us into his mission of being sent to save the world. He talks about the passion, about how he is going to die on the cross and then rise and defeat death itself. And so we've been hearing about this kind of divine rescue mission for the past three weeks. The first week, he tells the apostles, and Peter gets up and says, I forbid it. Because Peter wanted uh, worldly power, worldly prestige, a worldly restoration of the Israelite people. And uh, what Jesus says is, no, my desire for you um, is so much wider The problem often is that our desires aren't always wrong. They're just too small. And the Lord wants not just to have success in time, but he wants us to be successful for eternity with him, receiving his divine life, that life that is full and abundant. Last week, um, he tells us again that he is going to defeat death and he's going to die and then rise. Uh, But it was different with the apostles this time. They just couldn't care less. He's telling them about his passion and resurrection, and they're arguing about who was best, who is the best in the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus says, okay, he wants them to see the goodness of the passion and the cross and his mission. And so he's giving them like a remedial lesson. And he brings a child and says, you must serve one like this. Um, You must serve out in the world, and that will get you ready to receive my mission all the more. Today, we encounter a different vice, something that we want to look towards, something that Jesus is calling to mind. In the first reading and in the gospel, uh, there is, and we see it, the sin of jealousy. Someone else is doing good and people aren't noticing me, so tell them to stop because I want the renowned, I want the popularity. It's very focused on us. And so the sin of jealousy is rooted in our, and it stops the actual mission and the spreading of the word of God. And Jesus says, no, I want us to rejoice when good is worked through other people. I want us to enter into the battle against sin and darkness. Now, um, St. John Vianney, He is a saint. He was born right before the French Revolution. He lived in France, and he died in the year 1859. He is the patron saint of all priests, and he um, was living in a country, France, at that period of time. Had just experienced the French Revolution, and so there were a lot of people that were ignorant and indifferent to religious truths. They just didn't know about God or didn't care. And so he did a couple of things. What um, St. John Vianney did is he would sit in the confessional 12 hours a day. Um, And in the summer, it'd be 16 hours a day to be able to get um, the mercy of God working within his community. The other thing that he did is he wrote a book on a catechetical initiative on how to come to know the Lord. And he speaks about this sin of jealousy that we encounter today. And he defines jealousy as this, a sadness in our heart because of a good thing that happened to our neighbor. A sadness that happens within our heart on account of a good thing happening to our neighbor. Now you might not, you might think to yourself, I would never be sad about something good happening to somebody else. Good, but I would suspect if perhaps we reviewed our week and we looked at our social media habits, um, for the older people, Facebook, for the younger crew, Instagram, maybe for the middle, maybe some Twitter, How much do we compare our lives with others that we see in the digital world? Have you ever done that? And have you ever noticed that you're very happy with your own life until you see somebody else's wins in their life? For instance, you might be very happy with your job until you see somebody else get a promotion. You might be very happy with your house until somebody else gets a new one. Or you might be like, I have it all together until you see that someone else has a super clean and organized house. 
or um, my kid is doing awesome. Uh, they are so smart. They're the most intelligent, uh, you know, 11th month old in the world. <laughs> Until you see your friend. I, when do babies start to walk? Whatever it is, back it up a little bit. What, they were walking at 10 months and you're like, dang it, their kid's better. Or their marriage looks happier. Or they're so much holier than me. And then what do we feel in our heart in that comparison? A sadness. And the sadness actually truncates the mission that Jesus has for us. Because all of a sudden, his blessings, his goodness, things happening in the world that should bring joy are bringing sadness. Now, St. John Vianney says that jealousy in our own lives, when we recognize this, um, that it's really not, it's not just jealousy. Jealousy um, is a secondary um, emotion and feeling. The root cause where jealousy comes from is really pride, so he says. Um, it is wanting all, all gifts, all skills, all talents, all money, all good resources to be mine. That I am the best and I deserve everything. It's really this age-old sin of wanting to be God. And you see this in the devil, right? Uh, traditionally, uh, as the, the fathers will say that the devil said, non serviam, at the moment when God revealed that he was going to become man, the person of Jesus Christ, incarnate, uh, second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, um, and that there was going to be this exaltation of humanity, uh, the devil, Lucifer, the highest of angels, traditionally believed to be a seraphim, closest to God, said, no, I will not serve. And St. Michael, the archangel, said, and Michael means Mikael, who is like God. And the resounding voice is like, no one. So there's this pride um, that stops the mission of God or makes us want to stop. And that's where jealousy comes from. And so when we look at our own pride, uh, St. John Vianney in his catechetical initiative gives uh, several things to counteract the spirit of jealousy. Um, and so I wanted to share with those today because uh, we need to be taking this war against our sin as seriously as Jesus does. And today in the gospel, he said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Now, this is not literal. It's metaphorical. How do we know this? Because there weren't um, a lot of one-handed, one-footed uh, one-eyed early Christians. They knew that Jesus was being metaphorical. However, that he was taking it seriously. Now, I'm not saying that we all have to get rid of our social media, no Facebook, no Instagram, no Twitter. I think that there can be goodness in this. It can be a tool for evangelization. It can be a tool for connectedness. But if we notice this jealousy in our life, we can't just sit in that sadness we have to enter in to pushing against that pride that's living in our lives. So how does St. John Vianney uh, express this? And he, he gives several um, ways, but I'm going to highlight a few of them. The first of which is that we need to know who we are, that there is a God and you are not him, right? And that's a good thing because God saves us. He loves us. Uh, and this is such a profound truth that it's not just that God saves you. It's not just that he loves you, but God wants to be and live with you. The gospel of John chapter 14 verse 2 tells us that God the Father has a plan for you and his plan is that you will dwell with him forever. That in the Father's house there are many rooms, one exactly for you. And he has opened up the gates. Our, we have lost this divine inheritance because of our sin. And Jesus Christ, dying on the cross, opens heaven back up to us and points there to it. And that we are going to be there. This is good. There is a God. We are not him, but he loves us and wants to be with us forever. 
in that he made us uniquely. Psalm 139 verse 14 says that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, that you have a very specific role and a part to play in our world. And when we are jealous at something else that is good, when we're jealous of someone else's part, it robs God's symphony of its beauty. Even the difficulties in our life, the discordant notes, God will promise to bring resolution that will add to the beauty. Don't play somebody else's part. He has a space for you. He loves you. You are carefully crafted. And the mission happens when we enter in to that trust and love and rejoice. So recognize our role and our identity as beloved sons and daughters and that God has a place for us and he made us. The second thing that we need to do is to counteract that pride is to worship him. A lot of times we pray, like we'll pray the rosary, um, we will, you know, ask God for things, we might read the scriptures, but there's a certain type of prayer that's called worship, where we actually tell God how awesome he is. Uh, And so you can go to our Perpetual Adoration Chapel, it's right over there, and sit before Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament and tell him, you are King of Kings, you are Lord of Lords, you are all powerful, you are all wise, I love you, you are awesome. And that's good for us, because it reminds us of the truth that there's a God and and we are not him. I oftentimes like to suggest that people go on Spotify and get like a praise and worship playlist and maybe in the morning before you start your day, just listen and jam out to a song, sing the words, maybe out loud, maybe in the silence of your heart, Um, whatever your household allows, go right ahead. But to really worship the Lord and to watch how that pushes against the sadness of our heart that comes from jealousy. The third thing is to make sure that we are cultivating gratitude that we look towards the life that God has given us and we look for the blessings and tell him thank you for all that he has given us. The, the Proverbs are great. There are so many great Proverbs. Um, Proverbs 17 says that uh, I would rather have a dry morsel in a simple quiet house than a lavish feast in a house full of strife. When we are thankful, it's a trusting in God's plan. Um, the, the more that we have does not always make us happier. In fact, I would actually say that the more that we have makes people miserable. Look at the famous rich and wealthy people. They don't look happy. But even on social media, a lot of times people just post their wins. We are intimately uh, familiar with our own sinfulness, our own weakness, our own failures. And so when we judge ourselves by the mask that other people put up, that's not real life. Their house doesn't always look like that. They're not always that holy. Their life is not free from strife in the cross because the cross helps us to know Jesus Christ and so all life has the cross. So be thankful for what we have and where we're at and tell the Lord that. And then finally, rejoice with other people. When you find yourself looking at someone else's life and something good happens to them and you feel that sadness or maybe even that jealousy, rejoice with them. This is from the scriptures. Romans chapter 12 verse 5 says, rejoice with those who rejoice. Corinthians chapter 12 says that we are one body. When one part of the body uh, rejoices, all parts of the body rejoice. And so maybe send out a comment. You know, you see something good happen, someone gets a promotion. Hey, congrats. I know you work hard. Wonderful. You're doing great. Your house looks awesome. I'm glad that your 10-month-old is walking and is so advanced. But when we rejoice, when we push against that sadness and rejoice with those who are rejoicing, it's such a beautiful thing. It's entering into the divine mission. It's cutting off that pride that only leads to sadness. 
And what it allows is the mission of God's joy and full and abundant life and the happiness that will be forever. It allows us to experience it in some way now. And so recognize that there is a God and you're not him and he loves you and he has a place for you. Worship him audaciously and crazily in public. Third, give him thanks and rejoice with those who rejoice. And watch how sadness is not our story, but the joy that God intends. Amen.